welcome to Peep Show. I'm your host, Lauren Russell, and today I'm here with my co-hosts and experts in the field, Tesh Laybourne, Annabelle Evelyn, and Isabel Lugg. Hi, ladies. How are you today? Hi, Hi Lauren. Lauren. Yeah, good, thank you. Fab. And today we're going to take you on a journey back to the 1600s and a time that encompassed crucial events in the history of London, including the Great Fire of London in 1666, and saw the monarch Charles II bring a completely different tone to the royal court than the Puritan world of Otto Cromwell before him. A particular focus will be on the women of this era, which is a niche and unexplored part of history which we are intrigued to uncover. And to do this, we are going to analyse the diary of Samuel Pepys, which was written from 1660 to 1669 in 11 volumes, allowing us a peep into the lives of women in Restoration London. Mm. From the diary accounts of Samuel Pepys, we are going to introduce to you three former flames that held importance within his life all taking different positions within society of the time and interacting with Samuel in differing ways. We're then going to try and answer the question, how does Samuel Pepys' view of the other women in his diary compare to his view of Elizabeth? Elizabeth is our figurehead, the stereotypical restoration wife, so we'll see her degree of agency within the marriage and how this differed or was similar to a mistress and a servant that worked within her household. Now, without further delay, let us take a peep through Samuel Pepys' eyes. Samuel, it's great you could be with us here today. How about you introduce yourself? Well, uh, Samuel Pepys is the name, diarist by game. I was a prominent figure within the court of Charles II with status and power plenty. I married Elizabeth in 1655 where her 15-year-old beauty provoked a charm within me. Although I must say there are a lot of beauties in London at the time. I mean, have you seen Barbara Villiers? Oh, how I lust over her. There is also the pretty Deb Willett who happens to live under my roof, making it easy for me to woo her in my spare time. What, so you're suggesting that you woo Deb even with your wife Elizabeth in the house? Yes, I don't really see the problem here. You see, that's just how life is in Restoration London. There are beautiful women everywhere nowadays, and uh, although Elizabeth doesn't like me straying, she has to understand that I'm a man and this is what men do. Even the king straights, for goodness sake. It doesn't mean I don't love Elizabeth, but what fellow can resist having his head turned by a young, beautiful girl? Men will be men, as I always say. I find it striking that you mention that even the king strays. This, to me, solidifies that adultery is in fact commonplace, as I think you're suggesting. So, um, why do you think this is the case? Well, uh, the king hardly tries to conceal it, does he? He strolls out of Barbara Villiers' bedroom in the morning and back into Queen Catherine's. The brazenness of it all is rather shocking. Personally, I believe that so many men commit adultery nowadays because it's hardly a punishable offence. We live in the age of promiscuity, ladies. Moral codes of conduct went out the window with Cromwell. Yes, actually, as much as I disagree with the principle Samuel is suggesting, now, I found this to be true for Restoration London. I think it was Ian Mortimer in 2017 who stated that with the King's return came the ending of the Puritan prohibition. Yes, in fact, Kevin Sharp agrees with Mortimer in saying that society was transformed by the Civil War and the interregnum. He states that the Restoration culture was rakish, bawdy and pornographic from the top down held by the King. See, I'm only doing as men do. This is no crime, lady. I think we've heard enough from Samuel now. As we said before, our main focus here at Peep Show is to uncover the life of Elizabeth and the other women found in the men's diary. Yes, well, whilst he may be a bit of a sleaze, his diary is helpful in that respect. Plenty of women discussed by him. We've got a lot to get through. Let's start first with Elizabeth, who we have with us here today. Elizabeth, tell us a bit about yourself. Thank you for having me on Peep Show. Well, where shall I start? I was born in Devon to the wealthy merchant de St. Michael family and married my husband when I was 14. Um, we then 14. moved... Sorry to interrupt you, but that is incredibly young. Well, I was nearly 15. Um, well, you see, I was from a wealthy family and Samuel wasn't. He needed me to elevate his status. Anyway, we lived together in Axe Yard in London and for me, married life mostly consisted of keeping of the house and I thoroughly enjoyed trying to keep up with current fashions of the time. Samuel and I both admired the styling of Queen Catherine of Braganza. She was a role model to all of us women, despite the fact that she was Portuguese. I mean, after Samuel had seen the portrait of Her Majesty representing the Saint Catherine, we both immediately wanted a completed portrait of myself that incorporated all of these same features so I could stand out within society. 
This was quite common actually. In fact, portraiture was extremely important within this era. Historian Diana Dethloff shows how using a form of disguise or allegorical role is a way of representing particular qualities and virtues which are attributed to the individual in association with the role they are playing. When making comparisons to the women Samuel talks about in his diary, it's clear that when he talks of the Queen, Elizabeth also held similar admiration for her, something that she may not have held for all the women Pepys interacted with. But that's a story for later on. Now back to you, Elizabeth. So how do you feel about being the stereotypical housewife, especially when you had a healthy, up, a wealthy upbringing? Well, I tried to do my duties, but to be honest with you, I wasn't the best at maintaining the multitude of servants that we had hired, especially when Samuel could not be trusted to keep his filthy hands off them. Oh yeah, well, we have heard about Samuel's reputation as quite a ladies' man. Would you say this affected your marriage? Well, it was obvious that Samuel was going to stray, as many men did within this time. So as any respectable woman would do in this situation, I used it to my advantage. An example of a time I was able to show Samuel that I was not the ordinary submitting woman was when I took up dancing with the fine gentleman that was Mr Pembleton. He visited the house frequently and taught me the fine art of dance, in which I thoroughly enjoyed, of course. Samuel quickly became paranoid and suspicious, though, of my new loved hobby, as it led me to neglecting my other duties and directing my focus away from pleasing him. In the end, I was sent away on vacation to Brampton in order to separate me from Mr Pembleton, I guess so Samuel could regain some sort of control. However, unknown to him, I still think about Mr Pembleton and the time we spent together with fond memories. Anyway, overall, I knew ways in which I could tantalise Samuel and make him jealous, as submitting was not in my interest. Instead, negotiation and compromises worked for Samuel and I. Although there were times in which my fiery nature led to outbursts of anger and extreme jealousy, and... Um, even a strike on my face. The sad reality is that my status as a woman just did not match his as a man. Yeah, see, it's clear from Samuel's diary that Elizabeth did have a degree of agency to do as she pleased, while also quarrelling with Samuel, ridding of the many maids he entered into unjust behaviour with. However, examining the situation as a whole, it's clear that her position as a wife was inferior to her husband. Elizabeth never gets her own voice in the diary, so throughout she is portrayed through Samuel's viewpoint. And he refers to her mostly as poor wretch, or labelled as the title my wife, whereas towards Barbara Villiers or Deb Willett, who he uses words in conjunction with beauty and lust, something which is rarely seen towards his wife. Mm. Although it is clear that he did love Elizabeth, and he was controlled to her by an extent, the way she is talked about within the diary does not compare to that of other mistresses. Yeah, yeah. definitely not. Yeah. And that's the main difference of how Samuel's view of women within his diary differed to that of Elizabeth, I think anyway. Now, earlier we mentioned Deb Willett. Deb, as Samuel brashly informed us, was a maid who worked for the Peepses and was one of the main women Samuel references throughout his diary. The story of Deb and Samuel is one of adultery and of abuse on an abuse of power on behalf of Peeps. Elizabeth discovered the affair and fired Deb, banning Samuel from seeing her again. <laughs> a rather bold move on Elizabeth's behalf, don't you think? <laughs> oh, yeah, without a doubt. Despite not having any first-hand evidence from Elizabeth herself, Samuel's diary is littered with many examples of Elizabeth's strong-willed nature and her refusal to put up with Samuel's disrespectful ha- behaviour, which I think is quite admirable. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. It's so interesting that Elizabeth showed such strength within such a strongly patriarchal marriage. However, I do want to talk, mo- talk more about Deb. One issue with using the diary to evaluate Samuel's relationship with Deb is that he is reluctant to fully explain his behaviour towards her Mm. in order to protect himself from getting caught, I guess. Mm. One way he does this is by replacing replacing crucial words with with their French uh, or Spanish um, equivalents. And he viewed this as actively deceptive and assumed that Samuel did this to ensure that if Elizabeth or another were to find his diary, he could defend himself as they would not be able to read it for what it was. Mm. But to give us her side of the story, Deb is here with us today. So Deb, please introduce yourself to our listeners. Oh, well, thank you, Peep Show. Well, as you know, I'm Deborah Willett. My father was a merchant and I was first employed by the Peeps in October of 1667. Of course, you've discussed my relationship with Samuel, but I don't know how accurately it's been portrayed. Oh, really? How so? Well, historians have discussed my relationship with Samuel, and I think that even that is a bit of a stretch. I really had no choice in the matter. I quite liked Elizabeth. We often went to the theatre together, and as we were in the house together so much, we formed a good bond initially. I would not have willingly hurt her, especially not willingly have committed 
adultery with her husband, but Samuel gave me no choice. No, I certainly see what you're suggesting. Samuel's actions were undoubtedly ab- an abuse of power. Oh, definitely. Even after they fired me, he still continued to see me and followed me around London. I remember one day in November, he found me in Whitehall. I was staying with Dr Alban at the time, and he gave me money and kissed me. He was relentless. After all that had passed too, he got to my husband, Jeremiah, a job as a ship's chaplain. This was kind, but I couldn't help but question his intentions. It seems pretty coincidental that he got Jeremiah a job, which sent him out to sea so often. So we've discussed how Deb Willett was a woman Samuel had a physical relationship with under his own roof, which is the main difference between her and Barbara Villiers, the king's mistress who Samuel developed what can only really be described as an obsession with. Being the king's mistress, she became glorified as an early celebrity. The public were intrigued by her image, as well as rumours concerning actions within the royal bedchamber. Historian Lucy Worsley focuses heavily on Villiers and the notion of her being sort of a career mistress, where women played a prominent role in court defined by their sexual allure. However, Worsley also pays attention to the fact that if a woman slept with the wrong person or became too empowered, she could end up alone and probably with syphilis. <laughs> this slight context allows explanation as to why Samuel would have viewed Barbara differently to Elizabeth. But here on Peep Show, as you've probably guessed, we like to get the gossip from the real deal. So let's hear from Barbara herself. Barbara, I'm so glad you can make it. <laughs> well, I do have quite a busy schedule, but I do like to make time to answer questions, especially about myself. Well, we won't delay any longer then. Um, In your opinion, how do you find the fact that men such as Samuel Pepys uh, obsess over your image and develop a sort of a lustful relationship without actually knowing you? Well, in regards to Samuel Pepys, his intentions are harmless. He was quite ordinary for men to regard me in this way. You can even collect pin-ups with my face on it. Oh, wow. For me, (laughs) yes, of course, for me, it was more of a career in a way to gain influence within the court, as this was something women could not have done in a time for beforehand. I I kind of see what you're saying, but do you not feel bad for the, I don't know, the wives of these men or even the Queen? I mean, you bore all of the King's five children. You must have felt a little bit guilty. Darling, this was just the way society worked and how it thrived. Socially accepted norms, if you will. Elizabeth Pepys would have realised this was just fantasy and not a threat to their marriage. In regards to the Queen, I tried to make myself available to her through being one of her ladies-in-waiting, but she just got angry and pushed me away, so I don't need to take any of the blame there. Also, the King had every opportunity to stop our relationship, but instead he just took on more mistresses. I was just doing what I could to make a good standard of living for myself. I see. So, well, do you think that being a mistress led to you being able to escape the patriarchal system that was in place? Hmm, To a degree, I suppose. In comparison to other women, I had a far greater degree of agency and freedom to do as I pleased. Within my marriage to Roger Palmer, for example, the man who held no control over me, in fact, I was the reason he was given rank and status within the court. My status was not determined by my husband, unlike the marriage of Samuel and Elizabeth, and that's the way I liked it. Although it was an unusual and fortunate position to be in, I was still branded some rather sordid and horrible names. However, mocked within theatres, media pieces meant for entertainment, especially by the tyrant Lord Rochester. Yes, yes, I've I've seen this, it's true. Um, Many women, such as Barbara, faced ridicule, and they had to do exactly what the king asked. So some women probably became mistresses without having any intention to. Well, I suppose they had to keep up appearances in order to please the men, such as Samuel, as without them they wouldn't have gained fame or been able to thrive as much as they did within society. Although Samuel viewed Barbara differently to Elizabeth, the two women definitely share a commonality in the fact that they had to please these men to a varying degree, well, to gain anything within society. For Barbara, this was usually in sexual favours or providing provocative merchandise, whereas for Elizabeth it would have been through compromising to Samuel's demands of what a wife should be. Wow, ladies uh, and one gent, I think it's time for a roundup, don't you think? Yeah. Now let's get to grips with what we know. We have been introduced to all three women, Elizabeth Pepys, Deb Willett and Barbara Villiers, and all of whom interacted with Samuel Pepys to differing degrees. And examining the two other women enables us to answer our key question. How does Samuel Pepys' view of the other women in his diary compare to his view of Elizabeth? Well, personally, I'll start off. I think that Elizabeth defies a stereotypical housewife depiction. She held her own and managed to gain a degree of agency. Um, So in some ways, you could say she was similar to Barbara Villiers. You think about it in the way that Samuel views the women, there are some clear differences. I think we should break it down with some direct comparisons. 
When you look at the nitty gritty of the Peeps marriage, it was clear that they were in love. Historian Claire Tomlin places importance on Peeps' account of their relationship as husband and wife and gives an insight into how fluid his feelings towards her were. I mean, although there are multiple diary entries re- relating to their quarrels, they did share similar tastes in reading, shopping, and even house decor. Yeah, yeah true. Mm. And also, I mean, when Elizabeth died of typhoid in 1669, it was clear that Samuel suffered great loss of yeah. grievance. Yeah, yeah, he even finished his diary, didn't he? He stopped writing. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, he did. Yeah, so I mean, therefore, I, I think the way he views Elizabeth, although it wasn't full of adoration, there is an underlying theme of commitment to a marriage. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you, Tash. But I I also think you need to look and compare their respective status and individual power. I mean, Barbara had immense um, influence granted to her from the king, whilst Elizabeth was confined to the household and there was no influential way within the court or anything like that. True, but if you look at other housewives uh, that Samuel comments on in his diary and even letters uh, you can look at his sister Paulina or Pal as he calls her and there's nothing but discontent there and almost disgust to be quite frank she, he just sees her as useless he even claims that she's so ill natured and that he cannot love her which is quite horrible from your own brother <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely and it's interesting you mention that I mean we weren't able to get hold of Paulina so unfortunately we can't share her own perspective on the relationship here on Peep Show But we might assume that she was aware of her brother's domineering nature and how he simultaneously resents her, yet seeks to control her. Well, that's men for you. (laughs) That's hardly an excuse. But, Mm. I mean, does it show us that Elizabeth held more respect than than perhaps initially perceived? Obviously, he still exerts an immense amount of control over her. But she does make her opinion clearly known to him, which angers him, but he ultimately allows. In an early modern context, I find this somewhat radical. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, Mm. completely agree with you. Deb is perhaps Elizabeth's stark opposite then in terms of her not being able to exert any control over Samuel or gain her own voice within the diary. Mm, True, but we can't diminish the fact that Deb was the peeps' maid and so her position within the household was so much less than that of Elizabeth's. Yeah, that is true. Well, yes, yeah, she did work for Elizabeth, so in that sense the women are hardly comparable. Oh, definitely, I agree in that respect, but remember we are comparing the way in which Samuel views and treats them. Yeah, yeah. So... I, personally, I find that some historians have misconstrued Samuel's tone and they've not drawn enough attention to the, like, the clear abuses of power within their relationship. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's definitely, definitely true. In today's society, their relationship would definitely be scrutinised. Mm. I mean, as feminist historians, I doubt, we undoubtedly condemn Peeps as a patriarchal tyrant who uses society's woman household position to effectively, well, bully the women in his life into relationships oh, with him. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, definitely. For sure. Well, that's absolutely brilliant stuff, ladies, but I'm afraid we're out of time now. Uh, Thank you to our guests today, as it was a pleasure to have you, and of course, thank you to my co-hosts. And as always, if you want to take a deeper peep into the life of Elizabeth and other women of the time, be sure to check out our website, searchingformrspeeps2019.blogspot.com, and leave us any questions you may have, and be sure to give us a like and a comment on our Instagram, at Peepshow. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye, and see you next time. (laughs) 